From geography to history, plants and animals, science, and so much more, this is Mike Butler, and welcome to This Day's Trivia from Bison Podcasts. Each episode, we dive into five unique trivia topics, all tied to today's date. And our trusty randomizer wheel will pick one of those topics for the episode. Get ready for 16 fast-paced trivia questions with just five seconds between each question. Perfect for testing your knowledge solo or with friends and family, at home or on your next road trip. So buckle up. It's time for this day's trivia. Today is October 23rd. Get out your pen and paper to tally up your score. It's time for this day's trivia. Here we go. Topic number one. Happy Mole Day. What the heck is Mole Day? It's a way to celebrate Avogadro's number, a basic measuring unit in chemistry, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd power. Technically, we're supposed to celebrate Mole Day on October 23rd from 6.02 a.m. to 6.02 p.m., just so you know. That would be 6.02 to 18.02 on a 24-hour clock. For all the chemistry nerds who are listening, you know the mole here mentioned is a base unit for the amount of a substance, a way to count a huge number of tiny things, if I'm understanding correctly. I don't know. I'm not a chemistry nerd. If you are, write in with your explanation. Either way, that shouldn't prevent you from dressing up today like the small burrowing, beady-eyed mammal, the mole, which even the National Mole Day Foundation uses as a mascot. Topic number two, happy birthday to Pele, the Brazilian soccer player who is one of the greatest goal scorers of all time. Credited with over 1,200 goals, he was part of the Brazilian national teams that won three World Cup championships from the 1950s through the 1970s. He died in 2022 at the age of 82. Topic number three on this day, October 23rd, in 1991, 19 governments convened to sign the Paris Peace Agreements as an attempt to end the bloodshed in Cambodia that started in the 1970s at the hands of the Khmer Rouge. Under the direction of leader Pol Pot, the Khmer Rouge performed mass deportations and mass executions in efforts to reconstruct Cambodian society. Although the worst of the massacre happened in the 1970s, the Khmer Rouge still controlled parts of the country into the 90s, and fighting was ongoing. The peace agreements helped to establish institutions critical to a democratic state, and also helped to ease violence. Topic number four today is the Hungarian National Day, which marks the day of the 1956 revolution and fight for freedom, which broke out on the streets of Budapest, against the Soviets and against the Hungarian communist regime. The revolution lasted for two weeks in 1956, but eventually failed. Still considered an important event, as it was the first big uprising in the Eastern European communist bloc since the end of the Second World War. The communist system was abandoned in Hungary in 1989, and the first multi-party elections were held in 1990. Topic number five, It's also National TV Talk Show Host Day in the United States. This day was chosen to honor the late Johnny Carson, who was born on this day in 1925. Perhaps the best known late night TV talk show in my country's history. He hosted The Tonight Show for 30 years, starting in 1962. Today's topic will be... The 1991 Paris Peace Agreements. For today's 16 questions, let's go with the topic of peace agreements. Number one, what peace treaty officially ended World War I and is often criticized for its harsh terms against Germany? Answer, the Treaty of Versailles. The treaty was one of several that put an end to the war. Question number two, the Camp David Accords of 1978 led to a peace treaty between which two Middle Eastern countries? Answer, Egypt and Israel. Question number three, what 1995 agreement signed in Ohio in the United States ended the Bosnian War and created a framework for Bosnia and Herzegovina? Answer, the Dayton Agreement. 
also known as the Dayton Peace Agreement, Dayton Accords, Paris Protocol, or Dayton-Paris Agreement. Question number four, which treaty signed in 1848 ended the Mexican-American War? Answer, the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo. This treaty also extended the boundaries of the United States west to the Pacific Ocean and, along with the Gadsden Purchase of 1853, created the southern Mexico-U.S. border we have today. Question number five. In 1998, what peace agreement, named after the Christian Holy Day on which it was signed, brought an end to most of the violence associated with the Troubles in Northern Ireland? Answer. The Good Friday Agreement, also known as the Belfast Agreement. Question number six. The Oslo Accords in 1993 were a series of agreements between which two parties aimed at achieving peace in the Middle East? Answer. Israel and the Palestine Liberation Organization, or PLO. Question seven. The Paris Peace Accords signed in 1973 led to the withdrawal of American forces from what country? Answer, Vietnam. Question number eight. A comprehensive peace agreement in 2005 laid the groundwork for the secession of a new nation from Sudan. What is the name of this new country that officially declared independence in 2011? Answer, South Sudan. It was admitted to the United Nations later that year. Question number nine. A peace agreement signed in 2016 resolved a conflict involving the FARC guerrilla group and led to significant changes in this South American country. Answer. Colombia. FARC is an acronym. From the Spanish, it translates to the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia. Number 10, the Treaty of Ghent in 1814 ended what we call the War of 1812, which was fought between Great Britain and what other nation? Answer, the United States. Question 11. The 1494 Treaty of Tordesillas was an agreement between Spain and Portugal to settle conflicts over lands that were being explored and subsequently colonized in the Americas. The two countries agreed to the treaty without major conflict, with some adjustments over the years, including moving the line of demarcation 1,500 kilometers farther west in 1506, enabling Portugal to claim the eastern coast of what is now this country. Answer, Brazil. Question 12. The Congress of Vienna in 1814 into 1815, resulting in the most comprehensive treaty that Europe had ever seen up to that point, reorganized European lands after what major series of wars between France and shifting alliances of other European powers? Answer. The Napoleonic Wars. Question 13. Thought to be the oldest known peace treaty written on a clay tablet dated somewhere around 1269 BCE, the Kadesh Peace Treaty marked the end of a long war between the Hittite Empire and what group, who fought for over two centuries over the lands of the eastern Mediterranean? Answer. The Egyptians. The treaty pledged eternal friendship, lasting peace, and mutual help, mirroring many of the ideals of the United Nations that wouldn't form until many centuries later. Question 14. The 5th century Greek statesman Callias is often credited with negotiating a peace treaty between the Greeks and what other group? Answer. The Persians. The land once known as Persia is now modern-day Iran. Question 15. The Paris Peace Treaties of 1947 were a series of treaties between the Allied powers and five European countries that aligned with Germany and the Axis powers during what major world conflict? Answer. World War II. Question 16. Time for our tie-in round. Let's tie in last episode subject, the Swedish artist Hilma af Klint, with peace treaties, somehow. 
Afklint was no stranger to war. She lived through World War I, and also it is said that she foresaw the Second World War in her prophetic 1932 watercolor painting, A Map of Great Britain. On the topic of peace, Afklint's home country of Sweden, during both world wars, maintained what type of policy, despite showing favor of certain nations over others? Answer, a policy of neutrality. I've also seen it referred to as a non-belligerency policy. Sweden served as a refuge for many Jews during World War II, many migrating from different parts of Europe during the war. That's it for today. I'll see you next time. Thanks for playing. How'd you do? Write into the podcast to tell us your score. Or if you have any suggestions, thisdaystrivia at gmail.com. That's thisdaystrivia at gmail.com. That's all we have for today, but make sure to tune in every Monday, Wednesday, Friday for new episodes and new topics. Interested in ad-free episodes, bonus content, transcripts, and my sources for deeper dives into the topics? Looking for archived material from my previous podcasts? Get the Word and the English Sessions? Go over to patreon.com slash Bison Podcast Studios and give us just one single dollar for all of it. Patreon.com slash Bison Podcast Studios. That's patreon.com slash Bison Podcast Studios. Until next time, this is Mike signing off.